In my last video, I said that it was not possible to pay for an older style V2 or V3 Tesla supercharger with a contactless card. Someone commented that Tesla had a plan for that, but they were fitting a single contactless terminal at those sites. So I wanted to try that. I rocked up to a site with an older V2 supercharger, and what follows is how I got on. Spoiler alert, it didn't entirely go to plan. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew, and today I'm going to go through how paying for older Tesla superchargers is supposed to work, and why it's not yet something that I can quite recommend. In the last video, I talked about the need for charge point operators to support additional forms of payment as a result of the Public Charge Point Regulations 2023. I'll link to that video from the end screen, as well as a description, just in case you haven't seen it, and want the context of why this is necessary. However, the point is that UK charge point operators must support contactless payment at DC rapid chargers. In that video, I said that older Tesla supercharger sites were not compliant, as the older dispensers have no contactless reader. John commented to say that Tesla had a plan that they had asked for and received an extension to the deadline and would be installing standalone card readers. Thanks to John for that information. I always appreciate your comments, but especially so when it helps disseminate additional important information, as is the case here. So that's the plan. Tesla will install a single post with a card reader on it, which we non-Tesla owners can use to pay for charging at that site. That sounded great, so I wondered how far they had got with the rollout. There's a site I visited in the past that I knew had this older style of dispenser, namely Wokingham, just off the M4. Would this work there? Sure enough, this site now shows as accepting contactless in ZapMap. So I decided to get over there and give it a go. There's nothing quite like actually being on the ground and seeing what happens. This is quite an old site. It's got V2 dispensers, as we can tell from the fact that there are two cables. One for CCS, the top one here, that's what we need. The other is a custom implementation of DC rapid charging via a Type 2 connector. That's only for very early Model S cars and won't work on anything else. Ignore that one and choose the upper one, the CCS one. It's subtle, but sure enough, there is a post with a small screen on it now at this site. Over there, between those two dispensers, see it? That's what we need for payment. I wandered over and read the instructions. Plug in, making a note of the dispenser number, then start a session through the screen. Seems simple enough. So I did that. I plugged into 6B, wandered over to the screen, started a session, tried to pay, Oops, unable to complete contactless transaction. No problem, you can use chip and pin on these payment terminals as well. So I tried that, that seemed to work. Note that the screen says to swipe the card, but I don't think it means that. I don't think the end of the slot is open. If you look on the right of that card slot, I think you can see it's closed. Anyway, I'd got it to work with chip and pin. Well, sort of. The car wasn't accepting any charge. It just sat there not doing anything for several minutes. I thought maybe the car had timed out, so I decided to try again from scratch. Except now the dispenser didn't think there was a car awaiting payment. Hmm, curiouser and curiouser. Not to worry, move your car, I thought. This time to a dispenser that's closer to the terminal. Then you aren't trotting backwards and forwards across the car park to see if it's charging. New dispenser, new payment attempt, same thing, contactless, rejected. Chip and pin, oh, also rejected. Hmm. I retried a couple of times, but it wasn't having it. It didn't like that card anymore, presumably because of the previous attempts. Okay, well, I have another card. Maybe it's specific to that single one. So I tried my credit card. Again, contactless was rejected. 
unable to complete contactless transaction. Please insert card. Chip and pin. Yes, better. I've got a screen to enter my pin. And that, finally, was accepted. Up came the charging screen and will it? Yes, it started to charge. Good. There's a button there on the bottom right of the screen to end the charge, so you press that. It asks for you to confirm with the contactless card you started the session with, which doesn't work as contactless is misbehaving. However, there's a button on the charge handle. It's not easy to see when plugged into the car. I was getting a reflection from the sky, but there it is after unplugging. That's the button you click to open the charge flap on a Tesla. But if you press that after having pressed the button on the screen, then charging stops and you can remove the plug. So it is all possible, but you have to be reasonably quick to start the session before the car times out and then hope it actually communicates with the car correctly to pass current. But contactless didn't work any time I tried. It was only chip and pin that would work. That had me wondering if maybe there was an issue at that site. Perhaps it's just that one reader. So I thought I'd go elsewhere. The next day I went to Uxbridge to see if contactless would work there, but no, same thing again. Indeed, nothing worked at this second site. Neither card via either method. No way to pay at all. Oh, blimey. Fortunately, this was only a test. I didn't need a charge. But I'm glad I didn't, or I'd have been stuck. Now I suspect that all of this toing and froing I was doing has resulted in my cards being suspended by the payment provider, whoever that is. I use these cards in shops immediately afterwards and they are working, but I think until all of the pending transactions have worked themselves out, I can't use them for paying at a Tesla supercharger. I guess time will tell. I'll give them another go at a later date. But for the moment, I remain a little disappointed. It doesn't seem all that reliable a method of payment for some reason. I think maybe the payment provider, Tesla, or whoever else is running this for them is a bit too finicky, a bit too judgmental about payment cards, a bit too afraid of fraud. The good news is that everything is in place. The hardware is all there at a number of sites and hopefully Tesla will see that there's a problem and fix it. Tesla do monitor supercharging sessions and take action when there are problems. That's one of the reasons their network is normally so reliable. So I think this will get sorted, but maybe don't bank on it just yet. If you are going to use these older sites, remember that the cables are much shorter than on V4 dispensers. You might have to park in a weird way, potentially blocking other superchargers and other users, including Tesla owners, don't appreciate that. It turns out that the cable reaches for the central charge point on the front of a Zoe and a charge point on the offside front of a car or the near side rear will be fine, but not elsewhere. All right, there are a couple of other supercharger related items to clear up one from comments from recent videos, and one on another form of payment. Firstly, the helpline. I saw a comment recently saying that the helpline number 0800 098 8064 gets you through to a recorded message. That's sort of true and sort of not. I had a reason to use it this morning to query a payment, and certainly they do use an interactive voice response system to field a number of the calls. Lots of recorded clips asking you to contact them by other means, including web chats, to minimise the number of people needed to run the service. But you can get through to a person if needed. It just isn't all that obvious it's possible to do so. After entering the system, I pressed 1 for non-Tesla, and then 2 at the next menu for billing inquiries. I listened to all of the messages telling me about other ways to get help, Got told to press 1 to go back to the main menu, but instead I continued to wait, at which point I was put in the queue to speak to someone. As with many IVR systems, you just have to ignore what it's asking you to do. Pretend you don't understand and you will be queued up for getting help from a real human. 
Right, the last thing is roaming payment. The ability to use a third party payment provider to pay for supercharging. I've discovered more about that and it's interesting. I found an Electrive article that tells me what I've been looking for, namely which roaming payment providers you can use to pay for Tesla supercharger sessions and how it works. Like I said, it's odd. It's an interesting interpretation of the roaming requirement. So what you do is you register an account in the Tesla app and then add the roaming payment provider as a payment mechanism. Then you start and stop a session using the Tesla app and the payment is taken from the roaming provider. And I guess that's an integration of sorts. It sort of meets the requirements as they are written. However, it doesn't really meet the spirit of the regulation as you still have to register with Tesla for an account. It feels to me like a bit of a sneaky workaround. It is a position that they can argue achieves what is needed, but it'll be interesting to see whether it's challenged. If it isn't challenged, then why wouldn't every other network follow suit? They could still force you to register and get all of that juicy data about you, and that would be bad for us users. The need for a different app for every network is exactly what the regulation is intended to avoid, so let's hope this doesn't get picked up by everyone else and we return to closed networks again. Ugh. OK, that's it for another one. But what do you think about this? How do you feel about the new contactless support on older supercharger sites? Is it something you will try? And what about Tesla's implementation of the roaming requirements? Do you see it as a workaround or as an acceptable solution? Let me know in the comments below. If you've liked this week's video, then it will be a huge help to me if you click the thumbs up button. And I would love to have you as a subscriber of the channel if you want to see more from me. Thanks.